Hey everyone, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper and I want to talk to you today about meal planning. Honestly, it's one of my least favorite things. I would dread it all the time and I'm not into like looking for new recipes and stuff. So it took me many, many years of just kind of slogging through that process because I knew I needed to eat until I found something that worked for me. And it is The Meal Matrix by the lazy genius Kendra Adachi. And I'm going to talk about what it is and how I'm using it in my planner. So the meal matrix is kind of a formula that you put together every time period, whatever that looks like for you, a week, a month, whatever. And you start off with the calendar and you start plotting down the things that are going on. Right now, the pandemic is happening, so maybe not that many things are going on, but we do have some things in our rhythm. So looking at your schedule for you or your family and writing that into the calendar. This is important because it will call upon one of the key things, which is your like uh, fan favorites. And these are the recipes that you can pull out from scratch pretty easily. You don't have to think about it too hard because you've been doing it for a long time and uh, you usually have the ingredients on hand. So these are the fan favorites. Delicious, easy, no brainers. And this is where you plug those in into those busy, busy days so that you don't have to think that hard about it. Um, and then you also have your seasonal dinner queue. So with many seasons in the year, whatever that looks like, um, your recipes might change. So I know for me in the cozy winter time in Minnesota, the recipes kind of change. So these are the recipes that you have for certain times of the year. And then you could also have things that you are planning to try to make. Um, for me, sometimes I'm stretching the myself and I want to try making some of my mother's food, which is things like pho, ganjua, things like that. And you can plug those in as well. And when you're looking at the calendar, you are adding in based on your time. So the first thing is adding in those no-brainer um, meals on those super busy days. And then you plug in the rest. And here's the magic part of this for me, is that she has a formula. So you have to design your own formula but for example each week on fridays kendra's family has pizza and whatever that looks like for them whether it's takeout homemade frozen whatever they know they're going to have some kind of pizza they also do a lot of rice bowls so whatever that looks like for them that week whatever meats or ingredients goes in there they're having some kind of rice bowl and that made things super helpful for me as someone who really values variety and yet some kind of structure. This allows a lot of flexibility and um, as someone who loves that, it was worth a shot. So I've been doing it for a couple of months and honestly, life changing. So let me show you what it looks like in my planner. So my uh, meal matrix plan happens every single month in my passion planner. It's a medium size and I chose a month because I don't like to think about meal planning that often but I also know that it needs to be somewhat frequent so that I can adjust for for variables and flexibility and stuff like that. You might choose a week, you might choose six months, whatever you want to do. So I start off every single month and I lay down some of the big events that are going on during that month. I put some stickers down as to the things I do know that are happening, including the end of the semester. If you know, I teach at a university, so the end of the semester is nigh, and that means grading is about to happen. And so I put that down here because it's going to inform what kinds of recipes I plan for that week. And then think about my fan favorites. So that's those go-to no-brainer favorites that Kendra talks about. And I have those kind of stored in my head. I don't need to think too hard about it and I can plug those in. Something that's really easy for me is I put together a rice and a meat. Pretty simple and takes no time at all. So that would be something that I would consider doing the week of grades being due. And then I have my uh, seasonal dinner queue. And in the fall and winter, those are soups. I love soup in the winter time. Um, again, I am only meal planning for myself. Solo meal planning is a little bit different of a ride than planning for your family or even planning for you and a partner. So take that into account. I'm only going to have two recipes a week because that's all I need. And then I fill in with other stuff like little breakfast things and stuff like that and fruit. But I don't need a lot. And it's going to be reflected in my meal matrix. So then what I do is I think about my formula. So the things that Kendra was talking about with the pizza and the rice bowls. What is my formula? And I decided that because it's winter, my formula is going to be one soup and one flavorful food. So what that looks like is on Sundays is when I usually do my first batch of meal prep. 
and you can see that these are all kinds of soups. And I either refer to the ones that I have linked as recipes in my Google Keep. And if you don't know what Google Keep is, I have another YouTube video that talks about it. I love it. It's an app on your phone on the go. I also have recipes written down in my cloth and paper agenda, which is just all the lists that I refer to that I keep at home. So looking at that, I have the soups on Sunday, and then I have the flavorful food on the second half of the week. I write them all on transparent page flags. These are from Poi and Hun, and I used my UniPin permanent felt tip pen to write on here and I do this because life is flexible and things change so I know this is on my birthday season anything could happen and so of course I'm filming this on Saturday December 5th and last night I ordered out to eat because it was Friday and it's my birthday so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this actually so I have all the ingredients for this because I um, went to the grocery store last week and so I had the ingredients all ready for my chicken noodle soup and my chicken rice bowls. So then I'm just going to adjust. I still have to use those ingredients. So the beauty of it is I get to remove them and then shift when I'm going to do these. So I think I'm going to be able to make these on Monday because of what food I already have to eat down. And then, you know, this remains a little bit flexible. <laughs> so I can either leave it down here and swap it out with something else or adjust as I go. But this is how flexible it remains so that I know, okay, I can put it down without needing to commit too hard to it and remain open to the things that happen. I don't like to be too rigid about it, as you can see. Every month I do this and honestly it has been so helpful. I only have to really think hard about it, look up recipes one time, and then refer to it each week. So on Saturdays or Sundays, I look at what are the two recipes that are coming up next, and then I look them up and write down all the ingredients in my Google Keep app so that when I go to the grocery store, I have some kind of focused list of the ingredients that I need. And then uh, sometimes I can be really strategic about what it is that I use together, of course. So the chicken noodle soup from here is a rotisserie chicken. I used half of the chicken for the soup, and I'm going to use the other half of the chicken for the salsa chicken bowls. And I like to build things off from there because as a solo person, as you might know, you throw out a lot of stuff if you aren't careful about it. So I'm trying to do that as best as I can. If this is something that you are interested in trying out, I highly recommend going to the Lazy Genius on Instagram, the Lazy Genius podcast, and she talks about that way in depth. And then you can come up with your own kind of formula for your seasonal dinner queue and your meal matrix. So let me know down below. What are you going to do for your formula? What ideas that you've had? What's worked really well for you in the comments? If you liked it, go ahead, like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.